the changing face of the ultra-modern family. New examples are everywhere you look, from actor Neil Patrick Harris's announcement last month that he and his partner are expecting twins by a surrogate mother, to the new hit, com, hit sitcom called, appropriately, Modern Family, which maybe you saw earlier tonight on ABC. Well, what we've got is a look inside this brave new world of love, marriage, and procreation. Here's Chris Connolly. For Todd Holland, a director of such hit sitcoms as 30 Rock and Malcolm in the Middle, and his partner, actor Scotch Ellis Loring, the prospect of raising children was a conversation they began to have on their first date. I hadn't thought about having kids, you know, I mean, his clock was ticking. I mean, I mean, seriously, I, mean, I had the classic male response of, oh, that's so much responsibility. Legally married in California in 2008, Scotch and Todd had already decided to become parents by coming here to the surrogacy agency Growing Generations and its CEO, Stuart Miller. What percentage of your clientele is a same-sex male couple? About 75% are gay couples. We initially started the company specifically to help members of the gay and lesbian community. It's a very complex, complicated process that involves attorneys, doctors, um, psychologist, insurance. It's also an expensive one. Couples can spend from $125 to $200,000 and along the way put an up-to-the-minute spin on definitions of parenthood, all in pursuit of a traditional ideal, a family, that at least according to Miller might otherwise be out of their reach. Why don't you adopt? I hear that a lot. It's a fallacy that there are infants not being adopted. Every single healthy infant born in the United States, there is a line of families that want that child. So gay couples may end up at the bottom of that list. The growing generation's process is a curious admixture of courtship and shopping online. It's like the Sears Christmas catalog. They have this whole sort of Miss America, sort of what are your hopes and dreams? You know, what do you hope to do when you grow up? First, prospective parents pick an egg donor. Next, they search for a surrogate a different woman who will carry the egg or eggs fertilized with the couple's sperm. Why is it important that the egg donor and the surrogate be different people? It does make the process emotionally easier for the surrogate and I think the family, the intended parents, that she's not biologically connected to the child that she's carrying. Growing Generations requires its surrogates to have already born a child. We want to make sure that the surrogate understands what it's like to actually go through a pregnancy and how she's going to feel about giving that baby up, even though it's not her biological offspring. How do you test or counsel someone to be prepared for that? Well, we work with a psychologist, and she has screened and evaluated probably over a thousand surrogates. We've never had a case where a surrogate has ever tried to assert parental rights, has ever even said she wanted to keep a baby. And that's out of how many births you've been able to create? We're about 850 now. What we're talking about here is completely rewriting the script, not the American script, the Western civilization script, but the human script of family. Focus on the Family is one of the groups that opposes gay marriage, as well as surrogacy for gay couples. Now we're saying that parentage is not about male and female, but about any grouping of adults who have the good heart and the love towards the child. And that is a radical, humanly radical statement. But Scotch and Todd say they're not trying to radically change anything, just build a family for themselves. And they learn just how daunting that can be after going through four egg donors, two surrogates, and more than four years of disappointment. Our second attempt, we actually were told we were pregnant. And so I happened to be at work shooting a, a show, and we told the actors and told the cast, and we were very excited. And then seven weeks later, we went to the first ultrasound and found we had a birth sack, but there was no embryo in it, you know, and it was heartbreaking. They felt their luck change when they met this woman, school teacher Christy Root, a married mother of three, eager to help gay couples. Surrogates like Christy can earn $30,000 for carrying embryos to term. I love being a mom myself, and to be able to give something like that to another couple, it seemed like, you know, just something I would love to do. There was joy, but also a grave dilemma when word reached Scotch and Todd that Christy was carrying three viable embryos, one more than their health insurance was willing to cover.
they called us, you know, and said, um, well, we're congratulations on your pregnancy and we'll be happy to bind the insurance once you reduce. Let us know when you reduce to twins. And we're like, what? Reduction means terminating one of the embryos in utero. Staggering moral dilemma. I was like, well, we can't proceed without insurance. This could destroy us. But I tell you, man, you, I've tried for four years to get a heartbeat at that seven-week ultrasound. You finally realize that this is a life. I mean, I've changed my whole point of view about abortion, about everything. Luckily, it was a decision they didn't have to make. Christy got them on her personal health care plan, which covers multiple births. When it came time to deliver by cesarean section, Scotch and Todd were at the hospital right alongside Christy and her husband, Eric. It was fast, man. Yeah. They said, we're starting in five minutes. And it was like, <laughs> boom, we got the first one. You know, I was like, what? You know, it was, and then it was 940, 941, 942. Bam, bam, bam. So while you're processing your first daughter, you're just, your second one's coming in, and then before you can fully, fully uh, digest that. You hear a nurse yell, we got a blonde! Days later, Hogan, Hannah, and Nova came home to their family. And do you know whose biological father is whose? It's kind of obvious. Um, I'm mixed, but I, uh, we haven't produced a blonde baby in my side of the family for some time. But critics say this new vision of a modern family defies age-old verities. People say that culture changes, but humanity doesn't change. I mean, are we really saying that because we live in 2010, 2011, that mothers and fathers are no longer essential for the family? Todd, you know that many of the people for whom you've created quality entertainment on television are thinking, oh, this is appalling. This is just appalling what these people have done. This isn't the way babies were supposed to be made. I'm sure they are. You can look at us and choose to see differences, and that's easy, that's an easy choice. And you can look at us and choose to see commonalities to your life and your family, and that's a choice. We're now a same-sex, a married same-sex couple who chose to do what straight people have been doing as, much, as long as this technology you know, has allowed them to. If they truly believe that we shouldn't have children this way or any other way, then they're denying my father the chance to be a grandfather or my brothers and sisters to be uncle and aunts. Trying to answer every single um, um, adverse reaction is, is exhausting. Like any other parents, the most important thing is our children. If that isn't what's most important to you in defining community, I have nothing to say to you. Did you have a nice lunch? Meanwhile, this family grapples with more traditional issues like sleep deprivation and feedings, courtesy of their surrogate, Christy. Not only has she given us three kids, she's, she's pumping breast milk, storing it, and shipping it to us. What will you want them to know about the women who brought them into the world? They'll know everything about Christy. She's going to grow up with them. She and her family are a part of our family, and they will be forever. For Nightline, I'm Chris Connolly in Los Angeles.